In this video, I will show you how to use the Shaper tool to make a lovely house in Adobe Illustrator. First, I used paper and pencil to draw a house just using shapes. I took a photo of it and sent it to my computer using the Google Drive app on my phone. There are multiple ways to transfer images from your phone to your computer, but I find that emailing it or using AirDrop doesn't always work. Open up Illustrator and we will be creating a new file. If you have not done this before with us, you can go ahead and go to print, or if you have done it before, you've got your recent item here. I know the title of this one is going to be our unit 1.2 shaper tool. We're using our landscape orientation and one artboard and RGB color, click create. Go up to the menu bar and choose file, place, and you'll locate your drawing. Mine is here in my downloads. You'll click on it and then click place. Notice that it loads the image in your cursor. You're going to drag out a bounding box and it will place the drawing in that box. You can then move it to the center of your artboard. With it selected, go up to the control panel up top. If you don't see this panel, go to the menu bar, choose window, workspace, and essentials classic. You're going to want to click embed so that the image will stay stored in this project. If you see the word unembed, it's already done. Let's turn this drawing into a template. So I'm going to go over to my layers panel over here. If you don't see your layers panel, go back up to the menu bar, choose window layers. And then my preference is to be able to see the, see this thumbnail. So I'm going to come over to the three lines, go to panel options, choose other. And I change this to 60 pixels. And that will make that thumbnail a bit bigger. And then on that layer in the gray area next to the text, double click and it will bring up this dialog box where you can rename that layer. And then you can put a check mark next to template. That's going to dim the image to 50%. Click OK. And that also locks that layer. Since this layer is locked, I can't draw on it. So anytime you see a circle with a line crossed through next to your cursor, it's probably because you're on a locked item or layer. So we're going to come down to this plus sign and create a new layer. You can then go to the gray space on that layer and double click. You can rename this one as well. It is not a template, so you just click OK. I can also rename a layer just by coming over here on the text and clicking into that. Then I can type and change it. I know that this layer is activated because it's highlighted here. This will be the layer that I will draw on. I will trace my template drawing, but I want to collapse my layers panel with these double arrows. So I'm going to introduce you to the shaper tool. I'm going to go into another screen to show you the shapes that this tool will help you create. You'll find it in your toolbar, left column, sixth icon down from the top. If you hover over it, you should see the name Shaper Tool. I'm going to begin by sketching over each of these shapes, and the Shaper Tool will recognize the shape that I'm trying to draw, no matter how wobbly I am for the most part. It will straighten out my lines for rectangles and squares and it will curve my lines for circles and ellipses. In terms of hexagons, you can only draw a six-sided hexagon, and you can also only draw equilateral triangles, though I will show you how to adjust that in a moment. But straight lines can be drawn at any angle that you wish. Over in my layers panel, I'm going to turn off the visibility of the hand-drawn shapes so that we can see the successful outcomes using that shaper tool. Going back to triangles, I try to draw them with unequal sides, but you can see that the shaper tool automatically creates them with equal sides. And sometimes I'm trying to draw, say, a square, but if one of the sides is just a little too long, it will read as a rectangle. Same with circles. If I'm not too precise, it might turn it into a square. So here's a note. We're going to use the selection tool, the black arrow tool. And with that tool, we're going to click on a shape to bring up the bounding box. 
Then you can adjust the sides of the shape, giving you more control of making changes to the proportions and such. You can even go out to the corner and get the rotating arrows that will allow you to pivot the angle of the shape. You don't need to stay at a 45 or 90 degree angle. And you can always use the selection tool to adjust the length and angle of your lines. Now going back over to the house, I would like to get a bit closer so I can go to the bottom left corner of the status bar and adjust the percentage that I'm zoomed in or use the shortcut keys on my keyboard, command plus sign on a Mac, control plus sign on a PC, and zooming out would be command or control minus sign. With the shaper tool selected, you'll begin to trace around the shapes on the template. And because I can use my selection tool to adjust the size and placement later on, I don't need to be very precise with this first go around. Start with the most basic shapes. And you can see as I'm drawing, I lose the ability to see inside the shape, like the circle window that's inside the triangle roof. But that's okay, I'll show you in a moment how you can change the fill color to transparent. You do have to have closed shapes, however. If you don't close the shape, it just disappears. So go back and make sure that it is a complete rectangle and not just a three-sided rectangle. So go back to the beginning to close that shape. And if you make a shape that you don't want, you can always go back up to your menu bar and choose Edit, Undo, or Command or Control Z, and then redraw that shape. Notice that I have two lines indicating the backside of the roof. They cannot be drawn as one continuous line with an angle. I have to draw one and then click and then draw the other line. I'll speed through this screen recording, just capturing a few other shapes. And then I wanna show you a really great shortcut. When you have multiples of the same shape, you'll draw the first shape and then you'll go up to your selection tool, the black arrow tool. Click on it, and then you could do edit, copy, and paste, but a quicker way is to hit the Alt or Option key on your keyboard, then click and drag the shape to a new location to make a copy. Notice that the cursor goes from one arrow to two, and then you let go to drop it. So it's easy to duplicate the copy of original selections. You can use the pink smart guides to align your selections together. If you don't see your pink guides, go up to view and then make sure smart guides is checked. You might also wanna make sure snap to point is clicked as well so that you can feel it snap into place when objects meet at points. You can make your own guides by going to view ruler and then show rulers. Then when you go up to your rulers, you can click on the ruler and drag down your own guideline. You can use these to align, say, the two sides of your drawing. For example, I will align the trunk of the tree as I use my shaper tool to draw in the rectangle of the trunk. I can feel it hit that guideline to tell me when to stop as I make that rectangle. And then the other side, when I draw an ellipse, I can feel that same snap to point on that guideline. Now the chimney is a little tricky, so I'm gonna zoom into that. It is made up of just lines, and sometimes, as you can see, they're a little crooked. I'm gonna show you later on how I use those guidelines from my rulers to get these to be a bit more precise. Now I'm gonna draw in the details in the inside, but first I need to click on the selection tool and then drag a marquee box over all of the shapes that I've already drawn. Now notice over in my layers panel, you can see the shapes I've drawn on that shaper tool layer. And because my template is locked, my selection tool is not selecting the drawing as well. Up in my control panel, this first box, I click the drop down and it brings up some colored swatches. The first of the swatches is white with the red strike through it. That turns all of those shapes transparent. Now I can come back to my shaper tool and I can draw in the details of the windows and the doors. The shaper tool always defaults to a gray fill, but now you know that you can always change it later. I will once again use my selection tool to select all of the internal shapes that I've drawn. 
When you see a question mark for the fill color, that's because I've selected shapes that have either a gray or a transparent fill. So the question mark indicates that there's two or more fills selected and that's okay. I'll go back up to that arrow and bring up the swatches and make it transparent again. And then I'll click in the negative space on the artboard to deselect those shapes. And I don't want to forget to duplicate that window. So I will use my shortcut key of Alt or Option and drag it into place. Okay, using our selection tool, we're going to refine the placement of our shapes. So when we click on a shape, it'll bring up that bounding box. We can change the placement, we can change the proportion, the size, etc. You can also, when something is selected, use the arrow keys on your keyboard instead of clicking with your mouse to do fine tuning increments of movement for those shapes. For the tricky chimney, I definitely need some guidelines. So I should pull out from the left side, click on the ruler and then drag out a guideline. And then I can align the sides of the chimney so that they are more vertical using that selection tool against that guideline. Same for the top and front sides, going and dragging down a horizontal guideline from the ruler. I can line up the back and the front horizontal lines to that guideline. When everything's in place and you no longer need your guidelines, you can either move them out of the way or you can select them and hit the delete or backspace keys on your keyboards to get rid of them. Back over in your layers panel, go ahead and click on the little rectangle for your template layer to turn off the visibility and do any other fine tuning adjustments that may be needed. Wow, what a difference seeing those shapes with such straight, crisp lines, how it changes my initial drawing into something much more professional. And I can change the color of those lines using the stroke panel. I select them all with the selection tool and then come up to the second box up on the control panel. This box controls the colors of your strokes or outlines. When you click the drop down arrow, you have the same swatches of colors that you did for the fills. Choose any color that you like and then click in the negative space on the artboard to see that change. I'll do it one more time because I think I would like them to be a lighter shade of gray. All right, and finally, it's time to save our work. So we'll go up to File and Save. I have the Creative Cloud app downloaded so I can see that folder here. And I have another folder for this class inside the cloud. I always save my document as my first name, last initial, underscore, and then what the document is. This is our unit 01.2 and we worked with the shaper tool. So that's it. That is how you use the shaper tool to draw a house in Illustrator.